Next to enter the den are friends and business partners Jack Bostock and Tom Kitchen Dunn. They're hoping that their foodie business will tempt the dragons into making a meaty investment. Best buddies since childhood, Jack and Tom decided to work together after a transaction they conducted in a less than corporate location. Stood in a field, basically. Tom bought some sheep off me. We come up with a business and then we decided to go to the pub, didn't we? The entrepreneur's business plan was sealed over a good pint of stout. When we got to the pub, we just started jotting names down, what we were going to deliver, and then we dropped on the name. Lamb to you. Lamb. Not sure this will be one for the vegans. Yeah. Got it. Let's do it. Not very good with public speaking. I think in the den I'll be doing most of the talking. Well, I'll be glad when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey up dragons, my name's Tom and I'm Jack and we are looking for £30,000 investment for a 15% share of our business, Lamb to You. We started Lamb to You in October last year after I had a discussion with my granddad about there being no money in farming. So keen to prove him wrong, I went and rented some land off a friend, bought five lambs off Jack and said Got to make a good crack at this. I said, I'm either going to breed them or I'm going to start a lamb box business. And Jack said, I've had exactly the same idea, Tom, but I don't know how to do all the online marketing. And I said, well, got you covered. Should we go to the pub tomorrow and start a business? 24 hours later, we had the name and a website on the go. Lamb to you started off selling just half lambs, but now we sell pork, chicken, lamb, beef and other produce across the UK to our customers. And what we want to do now is, is expand as business and go into regional hubs and bring your local produce straight to your door no matter where you are in the country. I'm going to hand out some uh, proper Yorkshire meat for you to have a look at and then we'll take some questions, all right? Hoping to round up an investment with a dragon are shepherd Jack Bostock and web marketer Tom Kitchen Dunn. Th that's some steak in there. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. They're looking for a modest £30,000 for a 15% stake of their online meat delivery business. First to tuck into the Yorkshireman's proposition is Deborah Meaden. So, Jack, Tom. Yes. Yep. Are you buying the product in or are you actually raising all of your own meat? We raise what we can. I mean, I started with, I've got my own sheep flock. I mean, I was a head shepherd, so I know quite a, lo a few, you know, local farmers. So we're trying to give the farmers a fair price as well and buy direct off the farm. Good, I like that. We need to pay the right price for our um, food. Absolutely, yeah, we do. Yeah. That's fantastic. So there are other meat box type yeah, schemes. Sure. What is it that you can tell me that's different to any of the other buy a box of meat schemes? Sure. We're actually growing it more by breed rather than by cut or right. joint, if you like. So if we did some Dexter beef, and that was really popular, and it's been popular with um, celebrity chefs, so a lot of people knew about it. And the name Lamb to You, that's a bit of a problem, right? Because the name could restrict you. We, we started doing lamb, obviously, and we, in a couple of days, people <laughs> were asking if we do pork, yeah. beef, chicken. <laughs> it sort of forces hand to do other things. But I think the problem is, if you've got people searching online for beef and they come to a lamb to use site, they may just ignore it, not even click on it. We sold 36 chickens in the first week of putting them on the website. You know, people just went nuts for them. It tells you on, on this homepage, his, his website's very clear about what we do do. The entrepreneurs confidently bat back Tej Lalvani's concern that their name might limit their potential customer range. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to know if the company is delivering a profit. So, give me an idea of the shape of the business at the moment. We've just gone over £14,000 in sales and about 147 orders. Over what time period is that? Uh, it's really sort of four or five months full trading. So, you're doing about £2,000 worth of business a month at the moment? At the minute, yeah. Are you keeping body and soul together? What do you mean? We've only turned over 14 grand, so how do you live? Well, w w I work for myself full time, uh, sort of doing small websites and, and digital marketing for people. 
And Jack, you used to be a shepherd. I still am. I used to be employed, but I'm now self-employed. So that's what's paying the bills? Yeah. 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 So how much margin have you made so far out of that 14,000? It's, it's around sort of 3,000 pounds. But this is because we're actually using a third party butcher to butcher our animals, so it's quite expensive. But what we are doing is setting up as own butcher, so it'll fetch those costs down. But at the minute, we're kind of maxed out. We know we can't do any more unless we grow. But you haven't sold a lot, and you say you're maxed out. Well, it's not, it's not that we're maxed out, it's just we're doing roughly around 10 orders a week. And for where we're at, we pushed, what, 16 out last yeah. week, and it was a lot of to in and fro in, because they only go out one day a week at the moment. Tell me about that. So, if you order half a lamb, uh, the lamb will go in on Tuesday to the abattoir, will be picked up Friday, butchered over the weekend for delivery the following Monday, Tuesday. Oh, wow, I don't even know where I want to know that story. I'm worried about the length of time it takes you to get it from ordering with you. Mm -hmm. It's quite a long time. It is a long lead time, but it hasn't put people off. What it's actually done is made them more conscious of the process that's involved with getting food to people's plates, and they've come back for more. Peter Jones's probing reveals an overstretched business, albeit one with a loyal customer base. Tej Lalvani is curious as to what makes this meat unique. Tom, Jack. So, nobody else is doing what you're doing now? Not to the level of provenance and traceability that we do. We're personally going and vetting these farms and making sure they are legit and they are looking after their animals. Like, when we did the um, chickens, we, we sell them for £12 each, which is expensive for a chicken. Why, what was special about those chickens? Well, they were free-range, high welfare. Can I just check up on that? So, your chicken's free-range? Mm -hmm. So, what does free-range mean? Free-range is... I don't know the exact details, but they have a set law that they have to be let outside, so much space outside. I'm kind of hoping you know what your rules are. Bearing in mind you're setting yourselves out to be higher than the normal higher standards. You are going to have to tighten up on your welfare stuff because if people are prepared to pay £12 for a chicken, yeah. I'm going to ask those questions. No, I, I would agree. We do need to know more on that side of things. Jack and Tom's less than certain grasp of welfare standards leaves the pair on tricky terms with Deborah Meaden. Now Theo Pafitis wants to know more about their plans to take their company from clicks to bricks. Now talk to me about the butcher's shop. What do you reckon you'd be doing? What's your plan? What we really want to do is use it as a hub to distribute all the online stuff from, whilst it's also operating as a, a village butchers. But neither of you are qualified butchers. No, but I've worked in a butchers for quite a while. And... We're going to employ a full-time butcher. Yeah. If we perfect this shop model, we're going to look at doing regional hubs. So if you're in Cambridge and you order from Lamb to you, you're getting Cambridge produce delivered straight to you. But that sounds like something that's going to take a long journey. What is the time scale you're talking about? Um, so I, th I definitely think within the next two years we'll have minimum two hubs going, maybe three. Look, you haven't come in asking for a crazy amount of money, but I think that, you know, it's not a crazy hot business either, for an investment point of view. You're just too early. And I just don't see this a business to invest in right now. So, good luck, I'm out. Tej Lalvani is the first dragon to drop out. Deborah Meaden is a big fan of buying food locally. Could the idea be more up her street? You've done a really good job of selling your story, that's lovely. But my worry for you is that, I don't know whether it's just because I happen to be in the southwest, but I cannot tell you how many meat boxes there are around with high provenance. Yeah. So I think you're going to struggle taking yourself out of your current area and trying to go into those areas that actually already have the local meat boxes, the very high welfare. You know, I just don't get you're going to take over the world with it. I'm afraid as an investment it's not for me, so I'm out. 
guys. I'm sitting looking at it, and I see a shepherd and an online marketeer who are going to open a butcher's and open hubs. We're going to go regional. There seems to be no real focus. Yeah. I'm worried about the scalability from your perspective. I do think we are quite early. We have held back in growing it massively until we refined as offering. But I'm not convinced that I can see where I'm going to make my money. I think at the moment you've got a lot of ideas, but you haven't got a concrete business plan. OK, yeah. So from that angle, it's not an investment for me today, and I'm out. Jack, Tom, hi. Um, I like what you're doing. Weirdly, I quite like the name. I can see why the name's come up. I currently have got an investment and we've got a butcher's in Farnham and it's going great guns. And even though I think and respect what you're doing and I quite like it, I couldn't invest because I've already got an investment in Alf Turner and that's my focus. So yeah. I'm going to say that I'm out. Peter Jones becomes the fourth dragon to issue a rejection, leaving Theo Pafitis in sole custody of the entrepreneur's dreams. Has the retail giant heard anything to convince him this would be a worthy addition to his portfolio of shops? Guys, let me tell you, I'm excited for you. You've gone down a different route, and I, do you know what? The butcher's shop makes a lot of sense. That is going to cover yeah. most of your labour costs within that store. So I think that's a really good opportunity. Question, is there enough meat in it for me? Oh. That's the question. Oh, oh. Stop with the puns. <laughs> <laughs> no bones, please. Um, but it's a butcher's shop. And do I want to invest in a butcher's shop? I just think you're too early in here. Don't come in here and say you struggle with 16 deliveries. And that is the only reason that I won't be investing. So I'm going to wish you the best of luck and say, I'm out. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. So it's back across the Pennines for Tom and Jack, who failed to wrangle a dragon, but certainly gave it their best shot. We didn't get it, but it was good. It was very good. Although we didn't get investment, yeah. we're pretty pleased with what they have said. They were very encouraging about us business. Bless them. Nice bunch of guys. It's given us more fuel for the rocket, if anything. I just wanted to ask them if they deliver. What? They do liver. Oh, okay. do liver. Oh, that's yeah. it. We're just going to go home and give it the boost this business needs, really. Yeah, it's just a bit too early for the den, I think. <laughs>